Hello, this is Robbie Mitchell here from Head in the Cloud Development. Today I'm going to show you how to set up a custom record type and suite script in NetSuite that make use of NetSuite's built-in language translation features. This video is being recorded in November 2024 on NetSuite version 2024.2. So this video is intended for NetSuite developers and administrators. You should have the administrator role in NetSuite to do everything I cover here. You should also be familiar with some of the Suite Cloud platform features such as SuiteScript and XML record types. In this video, we're going to create a simple demo translation set, and we're going to use SDF to apply that translation set to a custom record type and upload that to NetSuite. Then we're going to create a user event script that uses the N translation module, and we're going to implement and test that script in NetSuite as well. So a quick note on software requirements. If you want to follow along exactly, you'll want to have VS Code and Node.js installed. You can, of course, also do this in WebStorm, which is not free, if you're already familiar with using the SDF plugin there. I'm not going to walk through downloading and installing the applications here because I do that in my other videos. But to give us a nice starting point, I have prepared an SDF account customization project here on GitHub that we can download. So let's download this and get started. I'm going to be doing the demo today in Windows 11. So I'm going to paste in the GitHub URL. I'm just going to click on code and download zip. Open that file, and extract. I'm going to try to put it in my actual documents folder, though. Okay, I should have just chosen documents. Let me just move this right into my documents folder. Okay, so we're going to open HITC Demo Translations main in VS Code. So after you open it, the first thing you'll want to do is open a terminal and run npm install. This just installs these required node modules. And if you're not familiar with these files like package.json and tsconfig.json, and I recommend you watch some of my other video tutorials where we talk through this a bit more in depth. In this video, we're going to jump right in. Okay, let's go in back into NetSuite and talk about our goal. So I've set up a very simple product feature record just with two fields, a name and a description. Notice that we also have this banner message at the top added by a user event script that tells me that I need to update the content of this record. So what if I want to translate the things on this record to other languages? In other words, if I change my language here, to French, everything still shows up in English. And we're going to see how to change that. I'm going to walk you through four of the language translation tools that NetSuite gives you to make this sort of thing easier. Let me switch my language back to English and we'll jump right in. So I'm going to go to the custom record definition for this record type. So let's start with the most basic type of translation you can do here, and that is field and record level translation directly on the UI objects right within the NetSuite user interface. So for example, if we look at our description field, there's a translation tab right here already. So if we wanted to set French, German, and Spanish translations for the word description, we could do that right here. We can also translate the help. And by the way, the list of languages that shows up here comes from the Languages tab on your company 
general preferences screen. So I could set a translated value right here, very quick and easy, and this works fine. However, there's one very good reason not to use this method. If you're developing a solution that you're going to deploy to other NetSuite accounts, then you definitely need to avoid this method, as these values will not copy over to other NetSuite accounts. In other words, if you're creating a bundle or using SDF, these values will not come along with the rest of the record data. These translations are only for this NetSuite account. That being said, if you're a NetSuite end user, just translating for use in your own account, then there's probably no good reason not to use this easy method. Okay, I'm going to point out one other translation feature here on this record. That is this Enable Name Translation checkbox here. What this does is it gives us the ability to set a translation for each individual record name. So on my easy to set up record, it basically gives us a translation tab on the record where we can set translations for the name of the record. So I've added one here for French. So this simply gives us a very easy way of translating whatever the name of each record is to our other languages. So if I want to translate easy to set up to Spanish, I can just copy that right in here and save the record. Okay, moving on. Let's again look at the product feature custom record type. So again, the record type itself has a translation tab where we've got translations for the record type name product feature. Just like the fields, these do not export with the record data. Okay, let's go a little deeper into the translation features. The next step would be to create what's called a translation collection. That's going to be in Customization, Translations, Manage Translations. So I've set up a very simple one called HITC Demo Translation Set. And I can click this link here in the Strings column to see the phrases that are translated. So for example, here's a Product Feature String. And here are the translations for French and Spanish. So again, if you're creating a solution that's going to be deployed to other NetSuite accounts, this translation collection object is going to be essential for you. Thankfully, they're pretty easy to work with. You can easily create one in the UI and then export it to SDF as XML and continue filling it out there. However, it is worth mentioning that the individual strings are exported separately from the translation collection header information. Let me show you what I mean. So in SDF, one of the objects that I have is the translation collection. This basically has the strings that we're translating and their default translations along with the descriptions. However, the translations of these strings are stored in the translations folder here, and there's an XLF file for each language that we're translating to. So this is the one for Spanish, for example. We again have each phrase that we're translating as a key ID, and then we have the target language translation of each phrase. So with that, it's very easy to expand to this and add more translated phrases here. Just remember that each phrase here needs to exist in the translation collection XML file as well. So let's make some progress here. If I want to translate this description field, how would we do that? Well, first we'll add a description key to our translation collection here. We'll just call it description. And the description of the description translation is, it's the translation of the description field on the product feature record. So after that, let's add a French translation. The ID is just description. Source translation is description. So 
Seriously. Okay, we're going to do Spanish instead because it's at least just a little bit different. But we can leave this here so that we know that it is translated. Now let's do the same for Spanish. But let's copy Spanish word. Paste that in. Okay. So we have our translation, but now how do we tell the description field to use it? Well, in the record type, I've got two versions here. One's plain English to use as a base, but the other one here. So you can see an example here on line 26. I've said that the record name is translated, and this is the key for how it's translated. So we'll do the same on the description, just in the label field. We're going to say translate equals t and then we need to use the script id of the translation collection i'm just going to copy this and the key we set is just description so that should be it so let's upload and test this and we might need to set up our account access. Let's see what happens. I know I've already got it set up to upload to my account, so I can just do deploy project. It's probably going to want to refresh my token. Okay, it says it's starting the browser-based authentication. Okay, it just took a minute. That was weird, but okay. All right, so that should be done. I'm assuming it's carrying on. Okay, yep. So what do I want to do if it contains account-specific values? Let's say cancel. Okay, so it's deploying. Okay, deployed successfully. So let's just take a look and see if anything changes. Nothing should change in English. Okay, but what if I change my language to Spanish? Okay, you can probably barely see it, but this is the Spanish version of the word description. And you can see some of my other translations have come through as well. So that is great. That works beautifully. Let me change back to English for a minute. Okay, now let's talk about SweetScript. As our starting point, I've given us this file. It's basically just a before load function that adds a banner with a halfway translated banner title. I think I meant to leave this even more blank for you, but oh well, this is fine. So we see what the banner is supposed to look like here in English. But what I'm missing here is that when we're translating something, we actually need to add on a second set of parentheses here. And I'll show you why in just a minute. But so if I run this, let's try it as is. If I do sweet cloud upload file, is anything happening? Oh, there we go. Continue. SDF is being a bit slow today. But that's okay. Okay, so if I refresh this, maybe I will switch to Spanish just so we can see. Okay, yeah, so as you can see, I had a translation for the title of the banner here. But look at how I've done the message to update. I've included this one parameter because I want it to say the user's name. I want it to call me out by name so that it becomes more clear that this banner is meant for me and that it really wants me to update this message. 
So the way we do that is, first we need to look at the key for our please update message. So here it is, it's just please update. So I'm gonna just copy what we have here to start with and use this for the banner message. Change the key to please update. But then to get the user's name, we have to pass that in as a parameter and we can get the user name from the runtime module. And then the way we pass it in is runtime.getCurrentUser.name. So the parameters are basically an array of string values and they'll get replaced with whatever, however many kind of parameter insertions you have like this. So I only have one and that is the user's name. So let's compile this and upload it and try it out. Come on, SDF. Okay. It's going. Okay, it's uploaded. So if I refresh this message now, I should see the message. Ah, but it's in English. Why is that? Uh... So it's currently showing me the default translation. Let's see, what happens if I put it in French? Hmm, okay, that's great. So it works in English, but not Spanish. Let me just check this. So I think I must have accidentally updated the UI version of this at some point. My SDF should be replacing this, but just to make it very clear, I'm gonna save that and switch back to Spanish. There we go. Okay, great. That's how it's supposed to look. And that's pretty much it. So we've translated the banner, the record type name, the actual record name, the individual record name, and the description field. So we've translated as much as we can here. And that concludes our sweet scripting tutorial for today. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Feel free to get in touch if you have any questions. Thank you for watching. We'll see you at Sweet World.